Hey guys, one step closer to the weekend. Let's jump right into what's making news. First up, downtown Wynn gets a facelift. Reporter River Cooper meets up with Miss Linda Banton, committee treasurer of the renovations project. The um, downtown revitalization committee was formed probably about 20 years ago. It was born out of the Chamber of Commerce with the intentions of becoming an Arkansas community of excellence. They received one of our grants and this is the building strip here that would have been the library. And I have a picture of that, so you can see that a little bit later. Is this building right here up ahead of us, is it going to be repaired? This is the bike shop, and actually it's already been repaired quite a bit. They've taken out all the border. Three buildings torn down so we can expand the railroad park downtown to a grassy area where people have, uh, have a chance to just lounge around and use it as, as another park for the kids to play in plus help uh, retain some storm water so it doesn't flood as bad on Front Street. So what about the, the buildings that were tore down over here next to the old train caboose? Well, that's what we call the Ray buildings or the tree buildings. One of the buildings had a tree, the, the top had fallen in and it had this huge tree that what we're doing now is awarding five $1,000 grants every year to a business in the downtown area or businesses in the downtown area. Um, so the Flat Town Bar and Grill, it was red and green and, you know, the colors just did not look good at all. But they applied for a grant and you can see how nice it looks now. They there's been three buildings that uh, right next to each other that have received the grants and it looks a lot better down here build a splash park and a farmer's market and an outdoor avenue to have yard sales and, and functions and gatherings. Uh, there are no aquatics in Wynn for the children, so this that's our big, big goal. Get Wynn City Hall has a plan to redo down Merriman Street, which goes from Falls Boulevard all the way to Front Street. They have a $300,000 grant that they're going to use to make improvements to the road and many of the sidewalks along the road. But these are the banners that we uh, purchased for down here. So. Next, the weather has affected the duck hunting capital of the U.S. Arkansas experiences the lowest amount of ducks since 2010. So this year, the drought conditions in the southeast United States um, led for all the people who could flood their fields with pumps, they had a lot of ducks early. The river bottoms hadn't flooded, so we weren't able to hold a lot of ducks in Arkansas. But the, the people who could pump, pumped a lot of water, killed a lot of ducks. Then it got stale because of the warm weather, and um, you know, kind of nobody could really kill any ducks. Then we had a good cold snap pushed a lot of ducks down. It was really good for a little while. Um, we shot those, and then after that, it kind of got stale again. But this week, uh, looked like we got a lot of new ducks. We got some more water because we had some rain come through. This has been the lowest recording number of birds killed since 2010. It's very fun, enjoyable. I have a duck dog, and I love to watch the dog work. It's just fun to be with family and friends. Personally, I like to duck hunt because it's really fun and I just like it when they come in with their boots on. It really gets my blood flowing. Past few years, we've killed an outrageous amount of ducks. This year, there were a lot of clouds, rain. Whit Bassin tells us the key to hunting this year. Well, on cloudy days, we took up our mojos and had a lot of water movement. And towards the end of the years, we didn't even have a mojo out. It seemed like the ducks were mojo shy after you've seen them the last 50 to 60 days. And Took them up and seemed to kill quite a few ducks. Uh, this season was pretty slow, but with a lot of effort put in, a lot of good guys, you know, we thrashed them pretty good. I had my whole life ahead of me. All because of that one thing, my life will never be the same. Oh, <laughs> 
Don't let a cell phone be the reason someone's life changes. Speaking of weather, Jay Chaton up next with your five day forecast. According to Groundhog, Pucks to Tawnyville, there will be six more weeks of winter. Now, let's take a look at our five day forecast. Friday, today, with a high of 66 and a low of 46. Saturday, with a high of 69 and a low of 50. And Sunday, with a high of 73 and a low of 56. Now moving on to next week. Monday, with a high of 71 and a low of 55. And Tuesday, with a high of 73 and a low of 52. That is all for our five-day weather forecast. The precipitation should be slightly above normal for March, and it looks like the last frost will be March 16th. Then spring will come on in. Jason Ton with your weather. Go, 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 We're back. Now basketball has had an exciting turn of events since January 31st. Jake Andrews is here with a story of an upward climb toward the district tournament. Yeah, Laura, early in the season the Jackets had quite a few injuries. Contributor Tyler Hutchison with a severely sprained ankle and several others out in conference play. And that has all changed now, leading to district. Their energy level, that everything about them was just so much more positive this year because of their, their experience that they received from playing throughout the whole season. Well, as you all know, that our team were was like 20 players or something like that, a big number, and then a lot of people started getting hurt or we had a lot of injuries and you know what I'm saying like a lot of things that we didn't expect throughout the season happened, which we had to just work our way around them and. Just keep pushing. Those were a bunch of like uh, problems that we had to do and go and face. And, and hey, look at us. We're doing pretty good still, in my opinion. Well, um, started off the year extremely well. Um, lost two, two very important players, uh, Devon Light and, and um, Tyler Hutchison. Uh, before we lost them, we had our rankings had made it all the way up to level within the state of Arkansas. Um, here lately, we've been struggling, um, but the positive thing is we have a district tournament this year. Because of the district tournament, and, and we know we will be getting Tyler back pretty soon, um, our hopes are still extremely high. Grider can be in practice, he can miss four or five threes in a row, and I might joke with him like, hey guy, uh, I don't know if I need you this week, you can't shoot. He's like, well coach, when we get to dog pound in here, when we get our, our, our student section, he said, you need to know one thing, he said, I don't miss. I don't miss it all. And you know, it's kind of interesting that he may have an off day in practice, but I promise you man, that when those guys get together and he see them, they just get motivated. We're looking good. Uh, we might have some tough, some tough breaks and little wrinkles, but we get them out. We get them out and we're going to the playoffs. For sure. Come March, I see us in the playoffs. Um, whether we are number one or number two seed, I don't have a clue how it's going to turn out as of yet. Um, I think it's going to boil down to which team is the healthiest. But I do know that, that we have an outstanding chance of making the playoffs. Um, hopefully, hopefully we'll go in as a one seed. Now a last minute addition for sports. The Jackets now have a new head football coach. I was able to catch up with him during his first visit last week. Hello, Wynn High School. I'm Laura Gaskin and I'm here with our new football head coach, Mr. Van Paschal. Um, Mr. Pascal has received several rewards for his coaching abilities, including Hooten's Coach of the Year in 2009 and 2011, Arkansas Democrat Gazette Coach of the Year in 2011, and Conference Coach of the Year in 2008 and 2009. He was also included in the All-Star Coach Selection in 2010. 
In his coaching career, Pascal has led the Monticello Billies to the state championship in 2009 and brought home the win. So let's meet him. So, Mr. I mean, Coach Pascal, we see that you're making quite the jump from Class 3A to 5A school. How do you plan to handle the challenges that come with this transition? That's a great question. Um, luckily, I've, after coaching 32 years, I've, I've not only been in 3A, I've been in 5A. I've been in the biggest classification when it was just 5A. So, been there, done that, I guess is the one way to look at it. But uh, coming back up, you know, I've heard great things about the staff. Of course, you're going to have more coaches, more kids. Um, as far as uh, assignments, you know, we'll get into that a little bit later with the coaches and things of that sort. But uh, I guess to answer that question, I've, you know, been at the 5A level before for five years at Monticello, and uh, you just put, uh, you put the guys in the spot, you let them work, and uh, it takes care of its own. All right. Throughout the past few years, the Yellow Jackets have went from running the spread to the triple option offense. Will you make any changes to this? Uh, I'm excited about that. I, I run triple option offense. Uh, that's, uh, that's what I do. And so I was excited uh, two years ago when I heard that Wynn was doing that. Uh, that was, uh, uh, there's not a lot of teams that do it. But, uh, so that's a plus for me coming in. It ought to be easy transition. We won't make, well, I say we won't make any changes. Of course we will. But uh, there will be some terminology differences. But for the most part, it will be a lot of the same stuff. In past years, we've had a very well-disciplined team. Do you plan to keep up this trend? Oh, yeah. You know, this, uh, it's discipline first. If you're going to have instruction, you have to be able to get the attention of your players, and, uh, and that's one of the things that uh, I was sold on uh, in the interview process uh, from uh, administration, that the schools run that way and, and the programs run that way. So uh, we'll keep it going. All right. I see that you've received many awards for your coaching abilities in past years. What do you believe sets you apart from other coaches? Uh, you know, uh, for me, just it's hard work, dedication, uh, and I know that's you know that's talk, but uh, um, you know it's a passion. I, I love what I do, and I think that's probably the difference right there. That uh, uh, when I get up in the morning, it's not uh, it's not hard to get out of bed to, to come and do what I do. I love working with kids, uh, the competitive spirit. Uh, the challenges that, that come with uh, coaching ball, uh, you, you, you're trying to uh, not only to win ball games, but uh, you're trying to bring a community uh, together, a team together, a school together, and uh, I think that's probably the difference. All right. As we know, football is a pretty big deal in small towns like Wynn. How do you plan on incorporating the community into your team? I have an open door policy. My door will be open for anybody that wants to come in and, and to visit. Um, you know, if you come out on the football field and we're practicing, I might not be able to stop practice for you, but uh, you're welcome to, uh, to be there, to, to stay, and uh, to hang out and wait. But uh, I entertain uh, questions. I'll make time for you. And uh, communication is the key word. Um, do you want player, what do you want players to take away from your program? The purpose, not the goal. Uh, better people. Uh, you know, you come to school for an education. That's that's the primary focus. That's number one. But when they walk out the door, what I believe that football offers and athletics in general is that uh, it's a game of life. You know, you're on the football fields, you're going to knock somebody down. You're going get, to get knocked down. It's how you react to circumstances and get back up and you dust yourself off and and you uh, try to make the next play. And in life, it's the same way. You get some curveballs thrown at you. So it's how you, uh, you react to circumstances. And uh, so once they leave a program, I think it prepares them for the game of life. Um, is there anything that you believed I should have asked but didn't? Well, I've got uh, a wife and five children. Um, my wife works here in the school system, so she's actually beat me over here for about a few months. Um, my son, Tyler, he coaches in Jackson, Tennessee. He's 26 years old. I've got a daughter that's uh, Hope, that's 23, that's uh, a first grade teacher in Brinkley, Arkansas, not too far down the road. Another daughter, Hannah, that's uh, a junior at college at Arkansas State who wants to be an elementary ed teacher. Um, another daughter, uh, Rebecca, who is at EACC, and uh, she's undecided, but uh, she's talked about journalism. And then I have a, a baby daughter named Rachel who is in the third grade at Wynn, and she's been practicing her uh, cheerleading for me already. Well, it sounds like you have a wonderful family. Is there anything else you'd like to say to the fans, students, and athletes? Uh, I'm excited. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, meeting with me and, and wanting to do this. Um, I'll just uh, talking to the student body, uh, the community. It's uh, it's a privilege and an honor 
um, to be selected. I know that uh, it's not by chance that I'm here. I believe that uh, God's opened some doors and, and we as a family are walking through them. Um, I'm looking forward to what he's going to do and, and what's provided and, and I'm looking forward to meeting the people here in the community and I want to bring it together. can't do that by myself. It's going to take the help of everybody but uh, uh, the spirit I believe is, is going to be the, the number one thing, uh, the passion that comes along with it, the fun and the excitement. I know the tradition of win growing up in Brinkley, Arkansas, playing against the, the jackets of old of the 70s and uh, I know the tradition. I know the tradition of the coaches here, going back to Bill Smith, Bill Riley, um, Don Campbell, uh, Ray Shempert, uh, and into Chris Hill. And I don't know if I missed one or not, but I know I'm close in there. And, in, and then the assistant coaches that come along with that tradition. And I know the uh, the people are proud of their program. And uh, you know, I want to I want to not only keep it where it's at, but I want to take it to the next level. And I can't do it. So when I say that, I'm saying that we as a community take it to the next level. Now for our final story of the day, a unique classmate that will warm your heart. Emily Hirons is here to tell you the story about Jamaica. Yes, Laura. Jamaica Williams, a girl I've known since grade school, has a really neat story, and she's someone we all need to know. All right, Ms. Ashley, I'm just going to ask you a few things about Jamaica. So what is your favorite thing about Jamaica? My favorite thing about Jamaica will have to be her personality, how she treats others, and just her being an all-around good student. What is something that Jamaica tells all of her friends? Well, like when they're getting in trouble, she'll stop and look at them like, really? Is that how you're acting today? We don't do that. She's very responsible and tries to say on to others about their actions and everything else. Miss Ashley, what are some of Jamaica's strengths and things she's good at? Jamaica's good at being help, helpful. She likes to help others. She's that very outgoing. She's very dependable. Jamaica inspires us all with her way of loving life and kind advice she gives others. Jamaica is my friend because she is nice and kind. Jamaica could hardly fathom when she was selected for homecoming court. Uh, when Jamaica was selected for homecoming court, she actually looked kind of scared in the room when it first was announced, and everybody around her started hollering, and then she was like, <gasps> I was very happy when I was selected for homecoming court. Jamaica doesn't just plan on telling us about her dream job, but making it happen in the future. When I grow up, I want to be a dress designer. Jamaica loves to come to school and to learn new things. Um, I think she likes the social aspect of school the best. Um, when she comes in, um, she's always very, very friendly, and she talks to um, all the students. And My teacher motivates me. Mika loves to go to choir because of her passion and love for singing. I like me in choir because Mr. Johnson's really nice. The motivation she brings inspires the student body. All your dreams come true if you have the courage to sue them. We're almost out of time. Before we go, we'd like to congratulate the Interact Club and those who participated in the Polar Plunge, raising $2,500 for Special Olympics. Check it out. Well, the Polar Plunge, um, the whole goal of it is it's raising money for the Special Olympics, and I've always loved the Special Olympics, so that's kind of cool. Bananas are awesome. Well, when the students asked me to do the Polar Plunge for the Special Olympics, uh, it was a no-brainer for me because I'm always about doing things that's for a good cause. And also, when I was in high school, I was the president of the student council, and we did the Polar Bear Plunge every year for the Special Olympics and raised money for awareness. So that's just something I'll always be a part of.
And that's a wrap. Well, I